Do you have an au revoir, a greeting that always gets stuck in your head? What about a swear word that you always seem to say almost automatically? Now, imagine that this phrase or swear word is the only thing that you can say effortlessly for much of your life. Damn. Unfortunately, the reality for many people who've had a stroke is a, a world where Helena Fisher or swearing is the only idea that they can effortlessly communicate. Now, a stroke is when a blood vessel in your brain, like here, bursts, and this causes areas of the brain to receive too little or too much blood, both of which damage the cells and cause them to die. Now, because of the way the blood vessels that feed your brain are organized, certain areas of the brain are more likely to be damaged, like the language powerhouses, making the ability to communicate after a stroke extremely difficult and the recovery process very long. But what about all that swearing and singing that still happens easily, even after a stroke? What's going on here? This is where my research enters the picture. And as a psycholinguist, I study how the brain processes language in real time. We've been able to figure out a lot about how language works in recent decades, and a lot of this information comes from a technique called EEG, which effectively allows us to see what the brain is doing as it's doing it. But how does this technique work? Well, you see, your brain is constantly producing electricity, but this electricity is very weak. It would take about 68 hours just to power up your iPhone. Still, this tiny amount of electricity is powerful enough to control everything that we as humans do, including swearing. So to see this electricity in action, we basically ask people to wear a big electrified hairnet while they read or hear words and sentences, and we monitor the electricity the brain is constantly producing. The procedure is completely painless, except for a bad hair day, and creates a sort of image that contains a lot of information. For example, we already know that, for the vast majority of the population, the left hemisphere is responsible for producing and comprehending most speech. But the evidence from stroke patients suggests that there's something special about swearing, which is what we want to find out. So, and it turns out, when we ask people to read or say words like damn and hell instead of dog and table, we do indeed see that the right hemisphere uh, is responsible for processing more swearing than the left hemisphere is with normal words like dog and table. So the next question that we need to figure out is how we can get these sweary but healthy areas of the brain to take over normal, boring language duties when these areas have been damaged. Ultimately, we want to know how the brain makes sense of swearing so we can one day aid in better stroke recovery therapies. We've made a lot of progress, but we still have a hell of a long way to go. Dankeschön.